Hi. Now in an earlier tutorial I showed you how any normal distribution could be transformed to this special normal distribution. It's called the standard normal distribution. It has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. And what Z represented was the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. Now we're going to need to calculate probabilities probabilities of being less than or above a particular number of standard deviations. Now probability is represented by the area under the graph. So what you see here shaded is the probability that our random variable z is less than a particular observed value of z. And this probability is denoted by a function like this, phi of z. Now you might be able to use a calculator that works out phi of z, the probability of being less than any particular value of z. But failing that, in most statistics textbooks and formulae book, you'll see a set of tables, something like this. They might not look exactly the same as this, but the principles are much the same. What I've had to do is remove the middle section here so that I could fit it all on the page. Let me explain how it works. Now this set of tables has Z going from 0 all the way up to 4. And Z represents the number of standard deviations then above the mean. So if you were no standard deviations above the mean, Z would be here and only half of this would be shaded. So you can see that phi of Z is 0.5. You'll also notice that if you go to Z being 3, 3 standard deviations above the mean, then we have a probability here of being less than three standard deviations of 0.9987, almost one, almost a hundred percent. So if you went three standard deviations up here, you'd have nearly shaded the whole lot. Now suppose then that you had to work out this probability here, the probability of Z being less than 1.5. What I would need to do then is work out what phi of 1.5 was. Now you don't have to write that. Some people don't. They just live with this. So that's fine. But what is it? Well, it's going to be found in this section of the tables. I'll just put that section down here, OK? And so when we look up 1.5, it's clearly this value in here, 0.9332. So the probability would be 0.9332. Now what I want to show you now though is how to work out other probabilities of being greater than or less than or more than particular values. Why? Because these tables are restricted. They've got our Z values that go from 0 to 4 standard deviations. That is, they're to the right of 0 and only give us the area to the left of Z. Now suppose we had to work out the probability of Z being more than 1.5 standard deviations from the mean. Well to do this, our tables, as I say, only give us area to the left. So to get around this problem, what we do is we look at the area under the whole graph, which would be 1, and take away the area to the left of 1.5. So all we need to do is 1 minus the probability of Z being less than 1.5, or phi of 1.5. And we've got that down here, 0.9332. So We've got 1 minus 0.9332 and that comes to 0.0668.
So that's how you can work out the probability of being more than a value, okay, when that value is to the right of zero. But that's not always going to be the case. For instance, we could get a question like this. The probability of being more than a negative value. And that's given by this shading. And in this case, the probability of z is greater than minus one and a half standard deviations. How do you think we would do that? Well, what we need to do is just use the symmetry of the graph. We could reflect this area in the axis here. Because the graph is symmetrical, we see that the probability of being more than minus 1.5 is the same as the probability of z being less than 1.5. And we've already got that value. You can see it's 0.9332. So that's how you would go about working out values where you want to be greater than a negative value. Just reflect that value across the zero so it becomes the positive value and you're looking at less than. Here's another one. We've got 1.5 standard deviations below the mean. In other words, z is minus 1.5. And we want the probability that z is less than minus 1.5. So how are we going to work this out? Well, what we do is mirror this to the other side. So we get something like this. And we now know how to work out probabilities of being greater than a value. We did it up here. It's just going to be 1 minus the probability of being less than the positive value of 1.5. So this is going to be then the probability of z being greater than 1.5. And then that's going to be 1 minus the probability that it is less than 1.5. And we did that sum, as I say, up here, 1 minus 0.9332. And that came out at 0 0.0668. So hopefully you can see that with tables then that are restricted to z values to the right of zero, you should be able to work out any probability above or below your z value by one of these particular methods. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea then. And that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.